How many people here have used ChatGPT? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a lot of hands. So ChatGPT, of course, is um, very exciting. This is like the you know, newest thing that, I mean, it's like revolutionary, right? And that's why everyone's used it. And, in, and from an AI perspective, and kind of historically in the AI field, people have been, you know, really, this is like the holy grail, right? A, a chatbot that actually works, it's not, you know, crazy. So, you know, the problem is, it's kind of under the hood, it's, you know, it's not what our brains are doing, right? From an algorithm point of view, it's very different. Um, even though they say it's artificial intelligence and neural networks, it's not very brain-like in terms of the architecture. So I asked it, you know, I figured, like, where am I gonna find the power pass? And there's some people who've, who've done it, but I figured I'd just go straight to the source. <laughs> and I asked it how expensive it is to run ChatGPT. And you could read through the whole thing, but um, the, the punchline is, is that um, these ChatGPTs, like I use a, a GPU, a modern NVIDIA GPU, which is about 400 watts, um, which is pretty expensive. And it takes about a second for that GPU to return the query. So we're, doing, we're talking about 400 <laughs> joules per query. And then I asked it to do a little bit of math, and you know I didn't check all the math, and I don't, didn't check the science here, which is another issue with ChatGPT. <laughs> um, and it said something like, if, if, if I'm asking ChatGPT, if ChatGPT does a million queries, which for a search engine is not very much, that's enough electricity to power about 4,000 homes in one day. Now that's a pretty huge energy footprint for a toy, right? And I think that, you know, if we're talking about this making its way into, you know, Google search or Bing or whatever, you know, we're not talking a million searches a day, we're talking billions of searches a day, right? And that's an energy cost that those companies have to pay, and it's a climate cost that we all have to pay. And so I think this is a major issue with um, AI today is that there's kind of a technical debt being accrued in terms of the energy footprint that is undergoing. Because the field is just taking off so fast that people aren't paying attention to this. And I think this is something that neuromorphic computing has something to offer. So I do want to kind of point out, you're going to see this in the selection of talks that we've put together, that Neuromorphic computing is a young field and it's a very broad field. Um, in, you know, in some cases, I think, you know, there's some fields that you know exactly what success looks like at the end. In, in this case, there's a lot of things neuromorphic computing may or may not be able to provide. The chart um, yesterday about where you need agility, um, there was a, the one side was, do you know what you're gonna do? How, uncertain, how much uncertainty and what you wanna do and how you're gonna do it? And the far right, top right was chaotic. That's the neuromorphic field, right? We, we, are, we know that there's potential, but there's a lot of places we might want to go with it, and there are a lot of paths to get there. And so it's a small field, and there's a lot of opportunity. The, the benefit there is that it's a chance to get in early. We know this is something that is going to um, have a lot to offer. And it's also a lot of people can contribute from a lot of different directions. So an entirely shameless plug, everyone in this room, very likely has something to offer our burgeoning field um, from perspectives from your own research and, and, and engineering.